This episode of Dean Attempts to Learn is brought to you by Sheet Happens, where you can purchase guitar and bass tablature books that have been edited and approved by the musicians themselves. Get your official tab books in both digital and physical formats, and all physical books come with a digital download that includes guitar profiles. If you're a fan of learning awesome music, head over to their website at sheethappenspublishing.com. And for my viewers, enter code word DEAN at checkout for 15% off your purchase. That's code word DEAN at checkout for 15% off. Welcome back to another episode of Dean Attempts to Learn. Thank you so much for joining me. So today I'm going to work on some periphery. Uh, it's not a band that I've listened to too much, but I know that they're all great musicians, every single one of them. So so we're going to look at a riff from a song called Marigold. I'm going to take this whole thing and actually just move it up to standard drop D, because right now it's in uh, C, drop C. So I'm going to play this main riff. This is the kind of thing I'm looking for. Oh man, what an awesome riff. It's like a really cool turnaround. I like that ending quite a bit. Just to start, I can sort of hear the chords in my head. It sounds like a, it's in a minor key, probably in harmonic minor. It sounds like it goes one, uh, like, uh, first scale degree chord, second scale degree chord, third scale degree chord, and it does like a cool turnaround. So I'm kind of climbing up inside of uh, this, uh, this scale, but there might be one or two notes that are a little bit different. So we're gonna dive in and see how it goes. So I'm playing in drop D. See how quickly I can get it. So we're going to start with the open string here. Oh man, what a sick riff. Oh, I'm going a little bit too quick. Once I get the actual like kind of sequence down, I think I should be able to take it and move it around a little bit easier, but uh, I got to get that feeling of it. And it's in seven eight, so that means every bar is seven eighth notes in duration. So it's one eighth note shorter than a standard bar four four. So that's what gives it sort of like that off tiny kind of feel when you play the second bar. So you play the first bar, it sounds okay. And the, where the, the place that it stops and then where the next bar continues, it sort of goes like, oh, kind of weird. In case you're not too super familiar with um, odd time signatures, yeah, I mean, that's the kind of the effect that you'll get with an odd time signature like 7-8. Eight. Uh, 7 eight is kind of one of the, it's kind of like one of the first ones you would learn, though. You start with common time, 4-4, four, four, and then you probably play some stuff in 3-4, and then 7-8 uh, is kind of like not too far off from 4-4. Four, four. Uh, you don't have to do too much counting, but, uh, but yeah, you, you still need to feel it out. That's the best thing to do is try to internalize the feeling of those odd time signature, so let's try it again. This is harder than I was expecting, uh-oh. Funny, my apartment building is like hammering. What the fuck is that? It's like 7 p.m. Weird. <laughs> Oh boy, all right, cool. Um, oh, did I change? I changed it. Okay, right, right, right. Change the tuning. Whoops. 
press the wrong button. So in case you're curious, I'm working off of the official Sheet Happens tab from this album. So uh, I'll link that in the description below. Thank you to She Happens for uh, sponsoring this video, by the way. Thank you so much. Please check out their website. Okay, I'm going to try it at half speed. Oh boy, it's so slow. One more time. I'm going to try it 70%. I'm just going to try it. Very cool. Uh, okay, so now that I have the basic uh, sequence down, I'm gonna try and just move the whole thing up. Oh, of course they change it. Oh, no, they don't. Oh boy, I'm not even thinking about that. That's scary. Sort of feels like I'm about to mess it up. Third one. That's a tough one to get. How the hell would I play that? What the hell? I can move it with my pinky. A little bit tough, but whatever. So. Uh, I feel okay with that. I'm um, sort of balancing on like a knife's edge of messing it up, but whatever. Um... What the hell? That's not cool, guys. Periphery. Oh man, that one's cool. That's a cool chord. Whatever the hell it is. Uh. Okay, back to this one. Ah, all right. Let's give it a shot. I'm messing it up. Okay. I'm feeling okay with it. I think I got the, um, I'm also playing a little bit too fast. I think I have the majority of the kind of the feel down for the sequence, but uh, I'm gonna try to have 60% speed, see if I can not butcher it too badly. Here we go. Oh, 
Oh, that's the riff. Okay, great. Um, so we got one more. Um, what is that last one? Ah, oh, man, that's cool. That's a, that's a cool riff. That's really, I like that. Uh, it's all part of this sort of um, sequenced idea. Um, bum, 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 climbing up in a scale, uh, sort of like a, a pitch collection. A pitch collection, not a pitch collection, a pitch collection. So climbing up in a certain way. You might hear a lot of it in classical music. Uh, kind of thing. You're just sort of taking notes out of a pitch collection and you're sequencing them in certain ways. If you're familiar with uh, the band that I'm in, Archspire, then you could check out the solo from Remote Tumor Seeker. That has quite a bit of sequencing in it because I had to fill a lot of space, you know, with a lot of really fast notes. Sequencing is the way to go for me, for lots of people. Lots of musicians use that kind of thing. Okay. Oh god, sorry about that out of tune note. I think I had it all memorized ish. Try to fifty percent. I messed up the last one, that's fine. All right, one more time. Uh, I'm trying not to look at the tab too much. I like to take it off the paper as quick as I can, or paper or computer screen or whatever. So I'm gonna try to not look at it too much. Uh, what are we at? 106, we're at 212, eighth note. 212, eighth note, uh, BPM. Oops. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, should it change there? Oh no, I was just being crazy. What a cool riff. All right, I'm trying to get on my own.
<sighs> One more time. Try with the song, why don't we? 60%. Oops. Oh my god, I'm sorry to subject you to that horrible guitar playing. Holy shit. See, I can play it by myself. The pressure of everyone watching that makes me screw up. so difficult. Something about the uh, the climb down on each one of these is sort of tripping me out a little bit. Try a little faster. That'll solve it, right? What the hell am I thinking? following along watching me play this hopefully you're doing a little bit better than me my left hand hurts what's going on ow Oh boy, something might keep messing up in here. It's like the climb down in some of these is kind of tricky. I don't know what's up. Plus my left hand, ouch. <laughs> I think I just made a revelation in my head. Just thinking it through, you know what I'm saying? All right, 
going to take just a second break. I, I feel like I'm getting better with it, though. We're at an 80%. Try 90%. You know, you only live once. Oh, boy. Left hand. Uh, so we spent some time writing some music today. Um, what did we spend? About through two and a half hours in our jam space writing out some pretty crazy stuff. So hopefully you are a fan of the band. If not, screw you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, if you're not a fan or if, you, if you're not aware of the band that I play, I'm playing a band called Arch Spire. It's a, a technical death metal type band. I don't know. It's pretty great to play in a band where you're trying to play stuff that's out of your skill range, but some days it's frustrating. Come home with like a really sore hand. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the new stuff they're writing, I'm pretty stoked on. I think everybody in the in the band is pretty excited about it. So we're a few songs in, uh, looking to maybe hit the studio next year. Who knows? Who knows? All right, 90%. My left hand has recuperated slightly. Let's try it. <laughs> Trip myself out. I'm thinking about it too much, you know. Ready, ninety percent. percent more look at that we did it well not yet you and me we did it together oh my god my left hand ah the stretches too much for my tiny little hands i'm sure they look massive on camera but uh they're not well i don't know i i, I don't know does this look weird do my hands look weird <laughs> this is how needy i sound right now do my hands look weird i mean i don't know i find that anytime i meet someone of the opposite gender so aka female they usually have about the same size hands as I do. I, it see, that seems strange. That seems like it's not what that's, I see, I feel like I should have bigger hands than that, but I don't, so. That's what I got. I don't know what you, I don't know what you want from me, you know? That's what I got. Right, not too bad. Uh, what was that like? A half hour, maybe? Maybe a little bit under half hour. Um, it's not an easy riff. It's definitely not an easy riff. It's really, really cool. Uh, please do yourself a favor and check out this riff. It is from the song Marigold by Periphery. I might just dig into some of the other stuff too on this song or this uh, this album. I'm not totally sure. Uh, maybe if you have a suggestion for uh, for me to work on something on this album or by this band, please leave it in the comments so I can check it out. And I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle and uh, procrastinate my way through this riff. Uh, I think that I pretty much got it. You be the judge. Let me know if you think I botched it. Actually, you know what? Yeah, no, yeah. Let me know if you know if you think I botched it. Just put it out there in the comments. Be like, yeah, you botched it. And I'll just weep quietly in my apartment building while my neighbors 
do construction or something, whatever the hell they're doing up there. I have no idea. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Dean Attempts to Learn, and let me know in the comments as well what you think I should learn next. Goodbye.